Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam came to take a man's soul. But his obedience to his parents appeared in front of him and he was saved. Subhanallah. One man was being punished in the grave, but his virtue of performing wudu saved him. One man was surrounded by devils, but the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. One man was trying to enter the circle of prophets alayhi salam, but was not permitted to do so. But then his ghusl, bath of impurity, arrived and set him beside me. One man was surrounded by intense darkness and he was frightened. But his hajj and umrah came and took him out of the darkness and brought him into the light. One man wanted to talk to Muslims, but they did not pay him any attention. And then his virtue of behaving well with relatives asked the Muslim to speak to him. And so they began to converse with him. Fire was approaching the face and body of a man who was trying to protect himself by using his arms as a shield. But then his charity arrived and shielded him. One man was surrounded by the angels of retribution, but his virtue of invitation to goodness and preventation from evil saved him and handed him over to the angel of mercy. The book of deeds of a man was about to be given to his left hand. But then his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arrived and he was given his book of deeds in his right hand. One man was short of virtues, but his generosity arrived and the weight of his virtues increased. One man was standing at the edge of hell, but his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arrived and saved him. One man fell into hell, but the tears that he had shed due to fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and saved him. One man was standing on the Sirat bridge and was shaking like a branch. But then his expectation that Allah Azzawajal will have mercy arrived and saved him. And so he crossed the bridge. One man was crawling across the bridge Sirat. But then his recitation of Durood upon me stood him up and helped him cross it. One of my followers reached the gates of heaven but they were closed. Then his witness, there is none worthy of worship except Allah Azzawajal, came and the gates opened up for him, allowing him to enter. The lips of some people were being cut. I asked Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, who are these people? He replied, they used to tell tales. Some people were hanging by their tongues. I asked Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, who they were. He replied, they used to falsely accuse others for committing sins. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Fatimi channel, did you see Allah Azza wa blessed the people being punished and set them free for the sake of obedience to parents, wudu, wudu of salah, fasting, zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, hajj, umrah, behaving well with relatives, invitation to goodness and preventation from evil. Charity, good character, generosity, crying due to fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear Islamic brothers, having hope in Allah azza wa jal, etc. All these things depend upon the mercy and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is omnipotent. And he forgives or punishes whoever he wants. And this is his justice. If he azza wa jal wants, he forgives for the sake of one little virtue. But remember, if he as the wants, he punishes for one little sin and his punishment is very severe. Yes, his punishment is very severe. You have heard about the last two men mentioned in the previous hadith. Our dear and beloved Rasul sallallahu saw the retribution being given to those who tell tales and falsely accuse people of sins. And then warn his ummah. Therefore, the wise should not miss even a minor virtue because it might lead to your salvation and avoid sins no matter how minor they may seem to be. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, please listen carefully. 
four stories about sinners. Sayyiduna Amr bin Shurahbil radiallahu ta'ala nu says, once a man who was considered very pious passed away. After his burial, the angels of punishment entered his grave and said, we will hit you hundred whips of Allah's punishment. Getting frightened, he asked, why will you punish me? I was a righteous man. They replied, okay, then we will hit you 50 whips, 50 kode marenge. But he continued to argue with them and in the end, they decided to hit him only one. So they hit him one whip, which filled the entire grave with blazes of fire and burnt him to ashes. He was revived. Then he asked, shivering with pain, why was I hit this whip? Mujhe ek koda kyun mara gaya? They answered, once you offered your salah without wudu and once an oppressed man came to you for help, but you refused to help him. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Padani channel, did you see even a pious and righteous man was punished in his grave in case of Allah's displeasure? May Allah have mercy on us and forgive us without holding accountable. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Ameen. The second story. Sayyiduna Harith Muhasibi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala says that there was a person who used to do the work of measuring grain. He left his job and occupied himself with worshipping Allah Azzawajal. When he died, some of his close relatives saw him in a dream and asked, Ma fa'ad Allahu bika? What did Allah Azzawajal do to you? He replied, due to my carelessness, dust had stuck on the scale that I used to use for weighing grain. I did not use to clean it. So the amount of grain equal to the weight of the dust would reduce at the time of measurement. And now I am be being punished for that. Third story. Similarly, another man who used to weigh food and sell without cleaning the scales also faced punishment in his grave after his death and people heard him screaming and shouting from within his grave. Some pious people rahimahullah ta'ala pitied him and prayed for his forgiveness and due to their prayers he was relieved from his punishment. There is a lesson in these two horrific narrations especially for those who do injustice when weighing things, O oh Muslims, although sometimes an apparent increase takes place in the wealth due to weighing unjustly, no goodness lies in this wealth. At times, these unlawful earnings prove to be a nuisance, even in this world. This income may well be lost in the form of huge medical fees, expensive medicines, robbery, bribery or theft. And above all, it may well bring about punishment in the hereafter. It is stated in Ruhul Bayan, the one weighing unjustly will be thrown into the depths of hell on the day of judgment. And having been made to sit between two mountains of fire, he will be commanded to weigh them. The fire will burn him when he approaches them. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel. Think carefully. The foregoing narration contains the admonition of extremely severe punishment in case of weighing unjustly for the sake of a few lousy coins in this short-lived life. Today, the gentle heat of the world cannot be borne. How can one tolerate the scorching heat of two mountains in hell? The fourth story. Sayyiduna Wahab bin Munabbeh radiyallahu ta'ala no said, There was a young Israelite who repented for of all previous sins and then consistently spent 70 years worshipping. He would fast during the day and worship at night. He was so pious that he would refrain from resting in any sort of shade and from eating delicious food when he died. Some of his close relatives saw him in a dream and asked, Ma fa'ad Allahu bika. What did Allah Azzawajal do to you? He replied, Allah Azzawajal held me accountable and then forgave all my sins 
but unfortunately,